Dominica, just a few miles from Martinique to the south and Guadeloupe to the north. Dominica is an Arcadia of unspoiled and untouched nature. Travel Nation will take you through this breathtaking island that's home to the second largest boiling lake in the world. An indigenous people living here for 3,000 years, colonial history, incredible rivers, waterfalls, and steaming valleys. Before we start our journey, let's meet Dr. Lennox Honeychurch. He holds a doctorate in anthropology from the University of Oxford and has dedicated his life to the study of Dominica and her rich history. Dominica is the most mountainous island in the Eastern Caribbean. It is also a very active volcanic place uh, with lots of hot springs and um, towering mountains which once were volcanoes. And that's why our first destination is the world's second largest boiling lake. The lake lies on a chamber of magma that fuels the heat and thus brings the water to a boil up to a whopping 192 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's just the edges. But to get there, it's recommended to hire a guide three hours each way and categorized as being a level five hike. Five out of five, that is. Means being in shape is definitely a plus. We've secured Peter Green, AKA the Bushman, to show us the way. So first of all, welcome to Dominica. My name is Peter Green, the comedy Bushman. Along the way, Peter finds a gum tree and demonstrates the flammable attributes of such a tree. It's not trouble, but flammable, as you can see here. Some fireworks here. It's a kind of windy though, but uh, you know it's, great. it's getting along. Yeah. Tarzan in the jungle. Oh. After several steep ascents and descents, short rest breaks, and incredible views all around, one of the highlights of this hike is finally reached: the Valley of Desolation, Mother Nature's playground. This is where sulfur, iron, and carbon meet. You got the yellow water, which is the sulfur. Then you got the, the gray, which is the um, iron. And then you got the black, which is carbon. Peter gives our camera guy a healthy skin treatment and cooks himself some lunch while he's at it. From here, it's not far. Another 45 minutes and the boiling lake is reached. Properly known as the Kalinago, Dominica's indigenous people inhabit a 3,700-acre territory or reserve on the eastern coast of the island. This area was officially handed back to the Kalinago people in 1903, uh, but we said um, the Kalinago people live across the island, particularly along the west coast where the, the sea is much calmer. Today, many Kalinago women engage in basket weaving and sell their products all over the island. Colin Piper is the director of tourism for the Discovered Dominica Authority and knows a great deal about this island. Uh, for those interested in adventure and hiking, uh, we've got quite a bit of that. Uh, we've got a lot of natural waterfalls and a lot of uh, uh, natural sites. Dominica was a popular colonial destination and endured several power changes between the French and the British. Uh, we changed hands seven times between the French and the English, so we have history and architecture from both. Located on a scenic peninsula just north of Portsmouth, this national park is best known as the site of Fort Shirley, a large 18th century British garrison. The British, they wanted to uh, open up the land for sugar and sugar was the highest, uh, most valuable economic crop in the world. A short hike away stands the ruin of the Commandant's Quarter. Untouched and isolated, this historic site reflects the might with which the British ruled most of the Caribbean. Well, it's time to say goodbye to this tropical wonderland and be on our way to our next adventure, filled with more exciting hotspots, shopping tips, and travel tricks.